Start with the snap. <laughs> Damn it. She can't do it. <laughs> play more Adams. <laughs> it's an important part of the role. <laughs> can't even fake it. <laughs> Adam's family! Yeah! What they wanna do, say what they wanna say, live how they wanna live, play how they wanna play, dance how they wanna dance, kick and they slap a friend. Adam's family. Won a Razzie. How could he win a Razzie for that? Yeah, it's a great song. How could Razzies were wrong? Mr. Sir Hammer himself <laughs> win a Razzie for his theme to the Adams Family 99, uh, 91 movie. Maybe he did one for a 99 movie <laughs> and that one was worse. The Adams Family. The Adams family. Oh. It'd been around new Adams Family, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Saban couldn't. Uh, yeah. Well, Saban was too rich for him, was the thing by that point. <laughs> Coming to the Adams Family now. We're talking about the Addams Family 91! Woo! The first live action revamp of the Addams Family since the 60s series. Yeah, unless you count that weird Halloween with the Addams Family. Well, I mean, family. that was sort of a continuation, like asterisk weird thing. It had most of the original cast, so. Yeah, but this took a lot of inspiration from things that were invented specifically by the 60s series. Oh, yeah. So it's interesting like how. Even the names. Because those weren't in the original comics. Right, yeah. So much of it was formed from that. Uh, I think it's interesting. Adam's family seems to always grow off of the previous iterations. Mm -hmm. Because they had the 60s series. And then they had this. It took a lot of the lore that was created from that to create their own version of it. And then now you go up to like Wednesday, which is clearly inspired by Christina Ricci's performance as Wednesday Adams. Pugsley, sit in the chair. Why? So we can play a game. It's called... Is there a god? So this, it kind of builds off of what mm. they do in each of them. So that's pretty cool. Gomez. Kind of more suave in the 60s series by John Astin. Yeah. And then you have, you know, Raul Julia, of course, playing him in this. Breakfast. Damn, it's good to have you back. Let's go. And he's great. He takes like you know, that enthusiasm that John Astin brought to the role. Let's have the real, the true, the unadorned you. Beautiful. He's an amazing Gomez. Yeah. This one and Adam's Family Values, I would call near perfect movies. They're so damn good, and every scene is a good scene. Remember Camp Custer for preteen offenders. Uh, maybe not, I don't know, Thing doing the FedEx thing, but you know, other than that. <laughs> That, that just feels like, like a, a FedEx commercial. Yeah, like even with the music. It's like, doo, 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 yeah. you're just waiting for the ending tag. Like, yeah. oh, FedEx, our hands will come off to get your packages so, to you so quick, something like that. You <laughs> might as well have inserted one of those random, like, car commercials that they did at the time <laughs> for how uh, how much that fit in with the tone of the rest of the movie. Mm -hmm. I want something easy to drive. It will have to carry mountains of luggage. Looks pretty tough. I like it. Shiawase? Yeah, the whole cast is pretty much perfect. I do always forget, though, that Carol Kane is only a grandmama frump. I guess she's frump in this one in the uh, second movie. Right, they changed some of the relationships. Most yes, notably the that. The comic strip and the, the original series as well, well, right? Or did the yeah, comic I, even establish I don't know if the they're... comic established, like, in the <laughs> series, though. Fester was Morticia's uncle, and then in this, he's Gomez's brother. Fast. Gomez. Fast. Thomas, fast. Thomas. So he's, I guess he's Uncle Fester to the kids only. Right. <laughs> Please, Uncle Fester, for the picture. <laughs> and then Grandma was Gomez's, Gomez's mother. mother, and now she's Morticia's mother. Right, because you have Grandma from come and do visits sometimes in the old show. I think she's a good Grandma Adams. From I thought Carol Kane 
was a little bit better. I think it's just because I like Carol Kane better though. I think she still did a great job with the role. I think everyone was pretty perfectly cast. And some of them it seemed like unusual choices. I don't know if I would peg Christopher Lloyd as a Fester Adams from yeah. what he'd done previously. Yeah, uh, you see it great. though and you're like, oh, that fits so well. Three parts dynamite with a nitroglycerin cap. It's perfect for small homes, carports, and tool sheds. If Fester is a character who is, he's either the best or the worst part <laughs> of it, depending on the uh, the iteration that you're watching. Why are you looking for me? I wanted to talk to you alone. <laughs> Don't be silly. How can we talk if we're both alone? Plus, of course, we use the telephone. <coughs> Fester. Gomez, please, you startle Iggy. Something is terribly, terribly wrong. I found it! Waltzheimer's! A rare tendency towards ordinary behavior and ballroom dancing. And there's no no cure! Yeah, I don't know. It's very easy to go wrong with Fester. And it was interesting too. They had a lot of early looks for the characters that were different. And especially with Fester. You can see yeah. in some early promo material. He's got he's some got like, egg head prosthetics going on. It's yeah. very weird. Yeah, they've done some facial prosthetics to help him look heavier. But they didn't like that look. And eventually what they went with, it's kind of like tiny head Christopher <laughs> Lloyd skinny guy in a fat suit little guy in a bad coat but somehow it still kind of works mm -hmm. I think it's probably the better choice yeah you wouldn't recognize him from what they did with the prosthetics he probably would have done a great job but I think this allowed him more expression and more oh, movements definitely. than the prosthetics would have mm -hmm. especially when you're looking at scenes like the mamushka scene and all <laughs> that like he's got to do a lot of physical stuff in this movie he does a lot of big expressions even when he's just acting with his eyes he's still acting big mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> apparently the kid that played Pugsley in this movie he went with his sister to the audition she was auditioning for Wednesday and she said oh everyone says my brother looks like Pugsley. So, oh yeah, get him in here. And they cast him, of course, and then not her. Oh, she must have been like, yeah, the regret. <laughs> I wondered about that family dynamic for the next 20 years. He's the one that's gone on to do the least. Uh, he's like a, a <laughs> transportation coordinator now or something. And uh, But I still thought that he did a great job as Pugsley. Pugsley got kind of a backseat from what mm -hmm. he was doing in the 60s. But Pugsley was never really that great of a character. So no. I think like the, the way that they utilized him in this movie as more of a supporting character like fit pretty well. It's pretty much the best use of Pugsley. <laughs> you don't want him to overstay his welcome. Yeah. Because he is kind of like the least interesting interesting character yeah, in the main family. He was more of a focus initially, and then they realized that Wednesday was a little more interesting. Mm -hmm. Though Wednesday in the 60s series was still pretty young, so she wasn't like the Christina Ricci iteration. Yeah. That doll doesn't have a head. It's Marie Antoinette. Paxley chopped off her head. The this ultimate. is what really forms Wednesday, yeah. uh, like up until the Wednesday series. It obviously yeah. takes a lot of inspiration from this. Haven't you ever slaughtered anyone? He's only a child. The way that she plays it very deadpan, instead of like, isn't it funny that a little girl is creepy, she is genuinely just creepy and more sadistic, I yeah, think. Yeah, it's one of those movies where everyone commits to the character. Yeah. So it's not people trying to be funny <laughs> in a way. It's like, you know, they're funny because their characters are weird. The thing that strikes me about Adam's family, and I think this is why it endures, is that the joke is that they're so weird and everyone's like, why are they so weird? Why do they love all this stuff? But it is such a, a positive portrayal of mm -hmm. a family and it comes off seeming very healthy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even though, you know, like, despite the fact they love beheadings and all of this, this other stuff. Like, the part where, like, Wednesday's coming in with a knife and then more Tish is like, is that for your brother? I don't think so. Is <laughs> there yeah. like this giant cleaver? <laughs> is that for your brother? I don't think so. So many comedies, they, they kind of root themselves in misery, and mm -hmm. you would think that this, because it's such a, a macabre subject, the Adams Family loves all this creepy, kooky stuff, because mm -hmm. they're creepy and they're kooky, they're creepy and they're kooky, that they would go that direction, but it isn't, because they love all of this stuff and they love each other, so despite the fact they're talking about all of these creepy things, really, love is what centers this film. Ah! Screams in the night 
can only mean one thing. He's home. These people on the outside are strange. They're weird. But underneath, they're okay. In fact, I used to say we were health the healthiest family on television. That was part of like what made the original series a bit different. It was something John Aston fought for. He wanted Gomez and Morticia to be a loving couple instead of the well, I hate my wife thing you typically saw at the time. At that time, it was historic to have a husband and wife who really loved each other. It was so unusual, all we had to do was be in love, and we were very different. They used to do a, a promo. Hi, this is Gomez Adams. My wife, Morticia, and I are the only well-adjusted couple on television. Yeah, it's, it's one of the most romantic couples ever. <laughs> it's like relationship goals, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's nice you got people who really love their roles, like Raul Julia, I guess, really loved playing Gomez. You could he tell. loved being recognized as Gomez. He, the same with Christina Ricci, I guess this is one of her favorite roles she ever did. Man, I, I mean, if it were me, I'd be proud of that too, <laughs> yeah. you know? Like, uh, they were both perfect in their roles, and uh, Raul Julia, you could tell, was just having a blast. Aha! Showtime! I think none of the Gomez's is topped <laughs> as, <laughs> as Gomez Adams. Mm -hmm. Like it was just perfect. He had the physicality, he had the energy. Spirits above me, give me a sign. Shall I be joyous? Or shall I be dead? He had the right amount of creepiness when it was needed. Mm -hmm. and he was suave. Yeah. Uh, he was just cool. He's sullen. He's furtive. Backstabbing. He sucks. I suspect him. You're unbalanced. And I hate him. He is Festa! I thought it was interesting Angelica Houston thought she wasn't going to get the role. Yeah, she because... thought for sure it was going to go to Cher. <laughs> because like, I think Cher probably could do a, a pretty good Morticia Adams, but like Angelica Houston feels like she just has that vibe. She has that great kind of cool, calm exterior with like this mischief like, behind her yeah, eyes. A slight hint of malice might be there. Yeah, she has like very subtle facial expressions, but you can tell it just shifts a little bit into mm -hmm. whatever the next emotion is, and that's just, it's perfect. And the hand, the plate thing. <laughs> <laughs> they had a magician play him because they had good dexterity and stuff, which you know, helps, I guess. If you want thing to have any kind of real emotion to it, you need someone who's really good with their hands, like a magician. Yeah, I think the evolution of Thing is really interesting. The original series, it's not explicitly just a hand. It's possibly connected to more of a thing, but yeah. you never see it. Well, and they had Ted Cassidy, who was Lurch, play thing and that caused a lot of problems for them because he was such a large right. actor and they had to hide him from being seen on screen except for his hand and i guess that was just something that was handy because he was <laughs> handy <laughs> I didn't even know I was making a pun, <laughs> but it was handy to have him around because, he, I mean, he's around for filming. But after that, starting with this movie, they would cast magicians because they could use their hands really well and act with their hands. Yeah. <laughs> and so the guys that play Thing, I, I don't think there were that many of them. Mm -hmm. They would specialize in playing hands in movies. I'm a hand model, mama. A finger jockey. We don't think the same way as the face and body boys do. Which is weird. Like, I think, yeah. like, one of them did the the hand and idle hands, you know, like, it just became the hand guy. Like, how do you hire a hand? Oh, get that guy. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. I know that hand. You're the world's greatest hand model. Ah! You freaking idiot! But again, perfect casting, because it was someone who knew how to do all of the physicality through mm -hmm. their hand. You can tell that Thing is expressing an emotion when it's like, oh, I'm sad, oh, I'm excited about something. How do you express that through your hand? I guess that mm -hmm. guy had to think of it. <laughs> <laughs> they had to do a lot of that practically too back then. So it was still sticking your hand through a table or getting ready to get rid of the black so the hand can just go across the scene and stuff. Right. I think the most obvious like hand through a table uh, was the scene where a uh, thing goes to warn Gomez about Morticia being captured and he's right next to the cereal and yeah, like you can see that the, the hand <laughs> yeah, inside the table. But it still works. Like uh, I would still take practical effects where you can guess how they did it over digital effects that may not look as good. I don't think we've even gone over the, the plot of this. No, we haven't. Fester's been lost for a long time, like 25 years. I'll see you again in 20 years. What? 
and Gomez wants to find him. His lawyer <laughs> owes his loan shark some money, which ends up being this woman who found Fester, we find out in the end. But it, they just think it's a guy who looks a lot like Fester. And like, okay, we'll have this guy impersonate Fester and he'll be our in to steal Gomez's money. I find it weird that she didn't put together that he was actually the real Fester, considering <laughs> yeah. she found him around that area. She knows the backstory. Can it, Gordon? Stop dragging your feet. You disgust me. I should have left you where I found you. Maybe she did know, but it's weird. If she did know, why wouldn't she bring it up? Because that well, would help bolster the whole thing. I guess she didn't want to bring it up to him because that might make him decide to side with his real family. Oh, well, I guess. I <laughs> guess that's what happened. You were a terrible mother. <laughs> Uh, that was another big thing, though, that changed while well, this movie was in production. <laughs> Apparently, it was going to be left ambiguous, or maybe it was just going to be flat out that this was not the real Fester, and they never know where the real Fester is by the end. At the end of the original draft, the end of the movie is that Fester is an imposter. They know I'm a fraud. The whole bunch. But the cast... Most of them, anyway, didn't really like that, so <laughs> they nominated Christina Ricci to go and make an impassioned <laughs> plea, which uh, <laughs> the director, Barry Sonnenfeld, said is very convincing, and he said, like, you know, okay, <laughs> I think they're right, so we will change this, and he said, like, yeah, and I think they were right in the end. I think that was the right way to go. They were, because it would be a weird thing to leave hanging, and it would be, I think, a little too far off the lore to be, like, even if he sided with them, like, I guess that's the new Fester, like, they okay. just what replaced him <laughs> and he just liked christopher lloyd anyway so it was nice that he got that redemption arc i'm not sure if it would have ended the same way if he was just gordon she was so articulate we changed the script so christina was another brilliant addition i think that's so funny they're like christina Ricci, you're the cutest yeah <laughs> you go you talk to the director please all of them are seasoned professionals yeah. <laughs> and they're like Go on, Christina! <laughs> Talk Except to for the Christopher Lloyd, who is apparently the <laughs> only one who's like, I don't care! <laughs> he could be a fraud or not! <laughs> I think that's hilarious. I'm sure he was probably like, either way is fine with me, but the, yeah. the way that trivia was worded, like yeah. he was the one person you didn't care, it's yeah. just like, I don't give a fuck! <laughs> Make him the film. biggest monster in the world! Film the movie! <laughs> Thanks. What if he was an asshole about it? Like, yeah. oh, I don't care. We're holding up production. We're going to be changing studios by the time this thing is done. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of the behind the scenes is somewhat more interesting than what we see on screen, even though it's a really great movie. Mm -hmm. But so much of this really shouldn't have worked but did because like you said, the production company went under while they were making it. Orion didn't quite go under, but they were close to it. So they're selling things, which is why they unloaded the Adams family because they were terrified of another flop, which that didn't work out for them. I could see them thinking though, you know, like they're like, oh, okay, this is an adaptation of an old series. Like maybe uh, there's a lot of bad adaptations, yeah. especially around pretty, that time. Adams family, I guess was pretty obscure at the time. A lot of people probably weren't watching the 60s show by then. This was modernizing it in a cool way, which uh, a lot of adaptations of things from like the 60s in the 90s didn't always turn out that well. Mm -hmm. you know, they would focus on like older properties and make them kind of goofy comedies or what if they went to the real world? <laughs> like stupid shit like that. It updated things but kept it like true to what you thought of from the Adams family. It just feel like the characters just modernized for 91. <laughs> yeah, and all the changes that they made made sense. Mm -hmm. The fact that they made Fester Gomez's brother helped build that relationship in a way that was interesting in the movie that wouldn't necessarily work Work if he was Morticia's uncle. Mm -hmm. So they created a different kind of dynamic with it that was more interesting. Making Thing just a hand gave it more things to do. It did. <laughs> so I think all of those changes made sense and they still managed to modernize it. Like it doesn't feel like a, a 60s sitcom with a laugh track, but it has the same feel of it. There are so many almost with this film. Tim Burton was one of the first choices, but he was like busy with Batman Returns and The Nightmare Before Christmas at the time. So it ended up being directed by Barry Sonnenfeld, who did a lot of photography. He'd be the lead photographer on a bunch of movies and stuff, which is 
I think the reason why this is such a visual film. I used to be a cinematographer. I had shot the first three Coen Brothers movies. I was a cinematographer on both When Harry Met Sally and Misery for Rob Reiner. You know what, that makes a lot of sense because there's a lot of really interesting shots, just what they decide to focus on at the beginning of the shots, how they decide to focus on the scenery, the fact that Morticia has this eye light that's constantly <laughs> following her, like all of the shots look really appealing to the eye. Except Angelica Houston's, which were appealed back by like bands <laughs> to do the Morticia kind of weird <laughs> eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that was not appealing to her eyes. <laughs> I guess she would have to take these bands off during lunch, otherwise she'd get a bad headache from having oh, it on all day. Yeah, that'd be the, the Jordy Visor problem, mm, yeah. you know? Like, uh, but she looked great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what do we think of the villains in this? The uh, the accountant and the, 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 the evil mother and yeah. Fester and turned Jester, good guy. Yeah. The big thing is the turmoil within Fester slash Gordon as he's going through the movie he's kind of realizing he likes all this weird stuff going on in the Adams family and he's at odds with his mother he's just like you know find the way to Gomez's money <laughs> idiot <laughs> The best is the ending for the two main villains because they just get shot right into open graves, which already have their tombstones. I guess they killed them. Are they dead? Does it matter? Maybe it's ambiguous, but they seem to have murdered them, or at least they'll be dead shortly after mm. they get buried alive. <laughs> Uh, I like that Fester didn't give a fuck about his adoptive mom. No. Well, like, I mean, she's kind she of a jerk a bad, to him at She the was end. a bad mom. She did raise him for a while. I guess. Like, but he's like, eh, fucker. But how old was <laughs> Fester by then? I don't know. When they showed them, they seemed to be maybe high school age because they were like right. in a dance or something when they said their falling out was because Gomez ended up stealing these Siamese twins <laughs> from Fester. Because while... he was so dashing. I wooed them both out of foolish pride. You were so dashing, you could have any woman you wanted. Because he was so dashing <laughs> and he was jealous of him. <laughs> Uh, it's great. Uh, there's so many great moments in this movie. Uh, I love when they go to the school pageant, talent show, what a performance. It's very weird. I think it's a talent show, maybe. It's supposedly Pugsley and Wednesday are doing some kind of Hamlet thing, yet these other kids are dressed as flowers. Yeah, it seemed idiots. like a class project. They had their own <laughs> solo thing. Uh, yeah, they come out as flowers, and Gomez and Morticia, I think this is the only time in the movie they seem <laughs> completely disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> Very relatable, though, being <laughs> disgusted at this. <laughs> <laughs> and then Wednesday and Pugsley come out and they just spray everyone with blood. It's such nonsense because like how how would they have all of this blood? They'd have to have like gallons of it and it's tubes amazing. leading <laughs> off the stage to set this up. It's so elaborate, but the oh. payoff is so good. Yeah, just there's like a big splash zone <laughs> in the crowd. Okay. I guess like the Adams family though, they have magic, so maybe they just like tapped into some portal and was Do shooting. They have blood. Magic? What's magic? magic in this one. The book at the end? I can't, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be some magic yeah. involved with that, right? They have other books, too, that were doing things, because at one point, the lawyer's tanning with one of the books that's shooting light out of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess I've never seen a movie that killed their villains off <laughs> by <laughs> opening a book and having a hurricane blow them away. <laughs> <laughs> You got Mercedes McNabb in her first appearance because she's in both of them mm -hmm. as different characters. That's during the portion of the film when uh, the Adamses are kicked out of their house because Fester has claimed it and they have to go look for jobs. The judge side is with Fester because he hates Gomez because yeah. Gomez <laughs> is always golfing and knocking golf balls through his windows. Yeah, Gomez kind of had it coming. <laughs> <laughs> he was kind of a jerk. <laughs> Damn you, Adams! Sorry about the window, Judge. I do love it at the beginning too. We gotta talk how about the, this. The uh, it starts with like Christmassy stuff going on. Yeah, how did the judge not get them on that? Yeah, <laughs> they pour boiling water on Christmas yeah. carolers. I mean, it's always like the Adams family are maybe killing people, especially in the new Adams family, where people kind of die in their yard constantly. Yeah, and like, there's just like, like a postman mm -hmm. who was there for like thirty years <laughs> or something. <laughs> 
they're very happy murderers. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the judge didn't get them on that one. I feel like you probably noticed yeah. carolers screaming as it's boiling hot boiling. water. I think it's boiling oil. Yeah. Boiling oil? It's even worse. Um, and that's yeah. a direct adaptation of one of Charles Adams' comics. Yeah, that had to be something they filmed last to add it on because they knew it was going to be a late November going into December release. Because otherwise, it starts on Christmas for that one scene mm -hmm. and then it has to be March for the rest of it because seven months later at the end of the film it's oh, Halloween yeah. so <laughs> it had to have been around then yeah. you just got one scene where they boil they pour boiling oil like, this is just what they're like anyway <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> you're gonna love this family they hate <laughs> they Christmas kill carolers people. <laughs> they kill people <laughs> How do they get away with it? Because <laughs> Gomez is so charming. I love when he calls into Sally Jesse Raphael and <laughs> about like the voodoo priest. <laughs> I'm so annoyed with him. Mr. Adams, please stop calling. We do not know where they meet. He knew when to smile about stuff, mm -hmm. you know, when him and Morticia are flirting and then uh, they're talking about when they first met, like at a funeral. You were so beautiful. No one even looked at the corpse. Your cousin Balthazar, you were still a suspect. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> fond memory. Morticia somehow becomes a kindergarten teacher. Which is really weird. Yeah, I don't know if like, she goes Does she to... have qualifications for it? Was she a teacher at some point? I feel like no. I feel like she has <laughs> never been gainfully employed anywhere because they seem to just have riches mm. and, and hobbies seem to be their job. Maybe if magic school existed, like in uh, the Wednesday <laughs> show, she taught she somewhere She did like major that. in hexes. So you're mm. talking about spells and hexes. You're saying magic's in this world, I yeah. guess. <laughs> to get the kids to cry, the director had to tell the kids they were going to get their measles shots after. And that's how they got them to cry. Oh, no! <laughs> He's like, I feel real bad about that. <laughs> At the end of that scene, when you see all those kids crying, those are real tears because I was so horrible. There's <laughs> a dark humor going on to make the movie. <laughs> Like we can't, we can't get them to realistically cry. So yeah. how are we gonna do this? <laughs> it's kind of crazy to think like this is where Wednesday torturing Pugsley started because that's been a thing ever since. Yeah, I don't know if he's supposed to be older than her in this. He um, is supposed to be, but Christina Ricci in reality was slightly older than him. Oh, okay. <laughs> she looks younger, but she is aged up from what Wednesday right. was prior to that. So I think that helped you from being like, isn't it funny? A little girl says kind of creepy things into like you know, something a little different with it. Mm -hmm. Obviously she's a little more sadistic. <laughs> yep. I think the third movie that they did <laughs> here and the new Adams Family, other things sometimes didn't really understand what worked about her torturing her brother. No. It was supposed to be kind of kids playing with each other, but it's like amped up from what that, you know, kids don't normally try to put them each other into a guillotine or whatever. Once um, in a while new Adams Family seemed to get, but then they would just kind of repeat the same thing over and over. Yeah, they would just repeatedly do it, but they wouldn't really come up with a lot of things, other things yeah, for the Yeah, that was characters. the problem. It wasn't, there was no variation. Like, what if it's the same scene where she's just yeah. torturing him? Yeah, well, they would also show the characters being affectionate to each other, so it never really felt like she was literally trying to murder her brother. And that was their playtime, mm -hmm. which was what made it so funny. It wasn't just the entirety of the character. Yeah. Mamushka! Mamushka! Let's dance it like Petrushka! Yeah, the Mamushka. There was more Mamushka in what we watched. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only difference between the two versions, just the length yeah, of Mamushka scene. Why did they bother putting two versions of the movie on the Blu-ray? Brothers, what's the break for back? The Warner Brothers, Harry, Sammy, Allen, and Jack. I know there's a host of others. Yeah, that's kind of crazy just for how little that is. It's just basically Gomez has a bit more of a song to the Mamushka dance. Yeah, yeah, they cut it down. I was like, I, I didn't remember. I was like, did they actually sing a song in it? And I guess they must have sang the they sang Mamushka, like, Mamushka parts. Mamushka and yeah, stuff. but they had like a whole kind of musical number. Mm -hmm. But frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn! They thought it slowed the pace of the movie down, which is why it was cut first. 
I think it works fine either way, but I don't think it would It's not played. long enough to really hurt it. Yeah, I think it's kind of funny they decided to just insert a musical number. Like, the Adams are just the kind of people that are like, and now we will <laughs> sing a song. <laughs> they do have some setup and payoff foreshadowing with the big duel at the end with Gomez and the right. accountant. Like, this is a regular thing yeah, that they did. He always gets his lawyer to come over and duel him before yeah. they talk business. I guess that sort of explains why that lawyer even holds up at all in this fight for any amount of time. He's mm -hmm. like, oh no, the finale is, he's, before the book thing, he's dueling a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> like, not much of a threat, but, of course, there's a gun. I guess fencing versus gun, the gun's mm. probably gonna win. <laughs> a lawyer and a loan shark. Those are the two big enemies. <laughs> That's true. I guess they didn't really stand much of a chance. <laughs> The lawyer especially should know better because he's like, he knows Gomez has all these traps and magic and stuff. They didn't know it was coming with Joan Cusack in the second one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Complete destruction with her. I like the lawyer's wife in this one kind of meets Cousin It and then is just going to leave him, I guess, for Cousin It. <laughs> cousin It's got like his cool three-wheeled car and stuff. <laughs> They use Cousin It just enough. Mm -hmm. Again, like, didn't need to be a featured player, but had some pretty funny moments. Knock it off. I enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just put that after it. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. <laughs> Not with red hot pokers! Is this gonna smell? I enjoyed that. Where's your costume? This is my costume. I'm a homicidal maniac. They look just like everyone else. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. Look at you! I enjoyed that. This is one of my favorite Halloween movies, despite the fact they tacked on the Christmas scene. It's still a Halloween one by the end. <laughs> because they're showing contempt for Christmas, because they're boiling the carolers. <laughs> <laughs> we know they love Halloween. What's in their lore? It's a great movie. Uh, I love watching it every time. It has like such a great vibe to it. It's creepy, but it's not just it's horror creepy based. And it's kooky. It's creepy and it's kooky. <laughs> Mysterious uh, and spooky. Yeah, but it's not just horror based. Like it's not based in misery. It's a fun movie. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I always love revisiting it. Yeah, it's good. Great spooky vibes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hashtag spooky vibes. <laughs> Anyway, the end. <laughs> <laughs>